Hi friends, it's Brittany Valadez here for BravelyDaily.com and I just wanted to come on and have a quick chat with you. So today I did a couple of interviews with some great people and they actually, um, the first two that I did um, happened to be with some of the cast of Moonrise. And also I was watching a Paul Washer sermon on biblical manhood and I haven't quite finished. I'm on the third one. I'm going to finish after this because I'm so excited, but it got me thinking. So for many of y'all who may not know, I was working in mainstream Hollywood for eight years. And I believed that as women, right, we want to have a career and we want to make it to this level of what we what is deemed successful, right? And it's usually success in terms of what the world sees as successful. A lot of times as women, we're also told that we need to be able to make it on our own because we don't, what, what if you know, we don't get married or what if when we do get married, the man could leave us or um, we don't want to be helpless. And I absolutely believe that as women, we need to be educated and we need to study um, whether it's formal education or studying on our own. There's really no excuse now. We have Google, we have YouTube, the internet. Um, we can learn, we have books, we can read, we should read. In fact, I think reading is not quite done as often as it, as it should be. So in my mind, yes, we should learn a lot of things. There's no excuse for that. Um, but as far as career goes, do we really need to be the CEO of a Fortune 500 company? No. And you're probably thinking, well, Brittany, that's so anti-feminist. Like, what's going on? Well, as you guys may know, I'm not a feminist. But let's say you're a feminist and you're watching this. Listen, give me a chance to explain. And if you want to be a good person who argues, who knows how to argue properly, it's good that you hear the other side's perspective, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, this is what I mean. Yes, women should be equipped. And there's no, I don't see anything wrong with a woman having a job. Um, but I think it becomes a problem when our whole life's goal is work and work only. Obviously, Paul brings up the Proverbs 31 woman. And he said, you know, was it actually addressed to a man? And I, I knew that. Um, I read it in the Bible and I love it. I'm like, wow, this is, yeah, it's so interesting. The Proverbs 31 woman is so well-rounded and she does so many things. But I love that it's important for her to raise her children right. He says her children rise and call her blessed, call her blessed. So this is not a speaking against women who can't have children through medical reasons. No, no, no. Um, this is speaking to women who think that maybe children aren't for them. But what I'm talking about is, again, how career is so stressed. To a woman. I have reasons why I think that that's the case. And I think that, you know, derives from a lot of feminism, which comes from what I believe men taking the Bible out of context, which is why believers, it is so important that we know our word and we know it in context because people can go and distort it. So in the Bible, you know, we have so many people we have, um, it was a, obviously a patriarchal society when it was written, but the Bible respects women and men in their different roles. Too many people, unfortunately, I would say like, I don't know, between the thirties and the fifties, maybe even before that, pretty sure. But I'm going to go back to the classic, well, 1950s housewife. There was a lot of um, women who were at home and who did a lot of things and catered to the men. And the men were going out there and they were making the money and they were coming back and great, you know, they were providing for their family. And should men work? Absolutely. Nobody wants a lazy man. Our society falls when we have lazy men who are just video gaming all day, philandering, doing what they want, uh, playing, watching, playing or watching sports. We don't want that. But then we also don't want men who just go to work for hours at a day, come home and ignore the duties at home of raising, help them raise their kids. I believe that it is a 50-50 responsibility for a man and a woman to both share the responsibility in raising their kids. In fact, you guys know there's so many studies out there that will talk about um, how the family falls apart when the dad's not involved. Men are so valuable. But too many times we have men not taking on their role, which it leads the whole family to crumble. So if we have men in this case, like in the 50s, maybe they were working hard for their family, but they were also having affairs with the office secretary and they were cheating on their wives and the wives were being at home, dutiful wives who were scrubbing the floors, cleaning, raising the kids, catering to the man and uh, loving the man. And then he would come home and just ignore her, treat her bad, 
or she would hear or learn about the affairs with her, the secretary or whatever, and she would just kind of be okay with it. I believe that's where toxic masculinity kind of, or no, where the rise of feminism sort of started or came from, or if anything, I believe it had, I believe it had influence on it because women were saying, it's not fair that we're doing all of this work and we're essentially raising a household of kids plus our husband who was basically an adult child. So, but the thing is, we took that of an actual toxic man who cares about his own needs in the most selfish of ways versus the needs of his family and his godly duties. And we distorted it to think of what modern feminism is today, where we have the women who hate men, who want nothing to do with men, and who will in fact do everything in their power to become a man. And I mean that in, in the literal sense. You know, I am a you could say you're a trans person, you know, I'm a trans man, trans woman, whatever, you know, what gender you were born with. There's only two genders. That's another subject, by the way. But then we have women saying, I can be just like a man when God created us with different roles, different roles. When we have both genders actually stepping out and stepping into the role that God created them, that's when we have what proper household, when we have the woman helping to raise her children, when she's valuing, um, the fact that she gets to be a stay-at-home mom or a mom who works at home or even a mom who works but is also maintaining her role as a mother. And then when we have a man who says, I am the leader of this household, I have to take on responsibility. Um, I can't sit there and let my feelings dictate. I should, yes, acknowledge my feelings because I, now I'm going to go off on a little trail. Um, when it comes to men and their feelings, I absolutely believe men need to acknowledge their feelings and be allowed to have them but i don't believe that their feelings should dictate them so a man needs to acknowledge when he's feeling sad depressed lonely holding all of that in actually leads to a lot of the you know depression that we have today it leads to resentment and leads to bitterness they need to be able to share it and when they can share it with the with the woman in their life that god has sent to them they're able to open up that woman is allowed to do her god ordained, ordained job to be a helper so do you see how important it is? But a man should not be dictated by his feelings because today he could love his wife. Tomorrow he could be attracted to the church secretary and want to just date her or the co-worker at his job. Well, today he loves his kids, but tomorrow they get on his nerves and he wants something to do with them. Today he feels like going to work. Tomorrow he doesn't. You see, when we allow too much of the feelings to dictate, it becomes a problem. But when we are we are learning who we are in Christ, we are seeing what the Bible says about biblical manhood, biblical womanhood, what roles we should follow and what rules we should follow. And we allow that to dictate our lives. That's where we fall into truth, where it's no longer about our feelings, but it's truth. Because, for example, I would say feelings could also have caused the toxic man that was in the classic 1950s. Well, I feel this is the way it should be. I feel like I'm in charge. Right. Um. Oh. Uh, or just, like I said, distorting the word. So distorting the word of God and what it says about a woman and a man. And then taking that toxic concept of I'm supposed to be the head of the house. The woman is supposed to respect me in the negative, unbiblical, toxic way. Therefore, I'm going to just act like this because I feel like this. That's when it becomes a problem. But when we look at the gender roles of men and women, and yes, when a man is following the Lord, walking humbly to him, kneeling towards him and that's who he answers to the woman will want to come and naturally respect her man why because he is kneeling humbly for the lord humbly before the lord following the lord we look at the man and we're like that's a man of valor that's the man of god that's the man i want to follow and i want to respect because he loves me so much i know that he would never cheat on me leave me or leave our family or abandon our family and i want to respect him i choose to respect him because I'm following the word. This is what the Lord says. And that comes from what? Willingness to submit to a man who is willingly submitting to God. So when we distort things, right? That's when everything becomes a problem. So when it comes to women and the workforce, I absolutely believe it's important. But it's not the most important thing. The most important thing for us is raising a family, raising the next generation. Because when we devote our time to our children and, and our husband, we're literally raising the people who are responsible for running the government one day. They are future voters, future leaders. 
themselves. They are the next generation. That is one of the, that's probably the most important job outside of leading the people, leading others to the Lord. But also that's, that's a way that we can help spread the gospel. Because imagine if we're raising the next generation of missionaries, right? Of pastors, of biblical leaders, but we do it following the way of the Lord. Why is it so controversial to do things a biblical way? In fact, you know, if you want to invade culture, the best way to do it is actually follow what the word of God says. So men, I want to encourage you, encourage you to step in your calling as men, to come humbly for the Lord, before the Lord, to get biblical counsel, to find a person who's an accountability partner, whose life you admire, an older person, if you're a young man who wants to be married and have a family one day, make friends with someone minimum 10 years older than you. The, the older, the better. In fact, my gener for me, I have women who are generations older than me, just as I have friends who are younger than me. But growing up, I never had friends only my age. I love to speak to women, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40 years older than me, because that's how I learned how to be who I am. And in fact, in the Bible, women are instructed to teach the younger generation. I think, like Paul Washer said in the sermon, which I loved, I loved his series on biblical manhood, so definitely watch that. He said, too many times we have young men basically raising each other. Why would, um, if we have all these kids 18 years old hanging around with one another, they're still learning about life. They need to, we need to be having it where the older men are hanging out with the younger men to help the younger men grow into men. But they can't grow into men. In fact, they're there in this early 20s making so many mistakes because they're learning life from people who are also making mistakes just like them. Hello? I think that's the reason why the Bible says a lot of what it says because it knows a thing or two about, I don't know, everything. So maybe it's time, women, that we take and we take and enjoy our responsibilities and our roles of being wives and mothers, and men taking joy and responsibility of being a man who is going to be a husband and or who's a husband and who is father is a father. There's nothing wrong with it. That's what I think true feminism is: is being able to be daughters of the king who don't find their identity in motherhood or their job because you can lose yourself in either way. Our identity is in Christ. And when our identity is in Christ, we don't become a slave to everything around us. And we start enjoying things like being a woman, being feminine, being a mom. So yeah, guys, that's just my thoughts. Um, let me know, what are your whole thoughts on women in the workforce, femininity, manhood? Um, I want to know. Just let me know in the thoughts below. All right, guys, thanks so much for um, hanging out with me. And um, I hope you guys will join me for my future interviews and chats. And if you haven't yet, if you'd like to follow me on social media, I love that too. All right. Until next time, it's Brittany Valdez for BravelyDaily.com. God bless and I'll see you in the next one.